morning. Welcome to Holy Week, uh, unlike any Holy Week that we've ever had before, right? Um, you know, normally our uh, Holy Week is filled with external uh, events and all sorts of things that, that help us to really live into the sacredness of this time. Uh, but this week, it's, there's going to be a lot dependent on you and on uh, your setting aside special time to make this week sacred. We are doing a few things this week to help you in that. Uh, we are having an at-home Monday, Thursday communion service, which we'll have on Facebook Live as well as on our website where you can tune in live. And that will be at, um, at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. And can't, Reverend Candace will be sending out some further instructions for that uh, early this week, probably Monday. We're also gonna be having a special Good Friday presentation, a video uh, posted here to our, to our Facebook page and again on, on our website uh, that's really reflective and um, allowing you time to ponder the Stations of the Cross and we hope that, that you will take advantage of that. Um, for now, I hope that you are gathered in your home, that you are lighting a candle and that you are invited to join us this morning for prayer and singing. Uh, don't be embarrassed to sing out loud. I sang last week in my living room with my kids there and, and everything. Uh, you are welcome to do that whether or not you are in a group or whether you are alone. Uh, God hears our voices and is well pleased. So if you will join me in an opening prayer this morning. God, we thank you so much for being with us. We know that uh, there is no place that we can go where you are not there. And Lord, even though we are separated still by distance, that we are connected by your spirit. And so Lord, we pray that in this time together that you would be present with us through the technology in our homes, that you would uh, make yourself real to us. May we feel the connection and the love between each of us this morning. We, left this, we lift this time up to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. If you'll join us for our opening hymn, it is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, or Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. <laughs> Thank you. 
affirmation of faith this morning is the World Methodist Social Affirmation, and you can join with me. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe. God, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts, entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of Earth's resources. Glory to be to God on high, and on earth peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity, based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security, by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace, with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And now if you'll join me in another time of prayer. God, there are so many things that are weighing on our hearts, on our minds, on our shoulders this morning. And God, we pray especially this morning for those who are in the healthcare profession, who are working long, long hours. We pray for those who are without work and who are struggling to, to know how to provide for their families and for themselves. Lord, we pray for our national leaders, our international leaders, during this time that you would guide them, give them discernment to make decisions that are good for all of your people. And God, we pray for ourselves and for our community. We pray for health. We pray for um, a greater sense of your spirit and connection when we are feeling so very distant from one another. Lord, we pray for those who are in situations where they live alone. We know that this can be a time of great loneliness. But we pray, Lord, we pray for your spirit to fill each home, to fill each heart, that we would know your joy, that we would live into your promises, that we would experience your life right now. Lord, we pray this for every person. Help us to be... Uh, examples of your love now that lord not just uh in solitude 
but through our relationships in our homes, through our phone calls, through our Facebook posts, Lord, that we would be uh, people who show your love and mercy to each person that we meet. Lord, be with us during this time. Bring us safely through it. It's in your holy and precious name that we pray the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this morning, we have something very special for you. Some of our children in the church have been working on it all week. But I've had the joy this week of receiving all of these videos of our children waving palm branches this week and put them together in a video for all of us to enjoy. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, our virtual palm processional. Hosanna! Hosanna! Jesus is king. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus is king. What you say? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Yay! Hosanna, uh, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna in the high! Hosanna in the high! Hosanna! 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 This week, again, as we're, as we're seeking to make this time sacred to, to relive and to retell the story of Jesus, uh, I hope that you children will take time, make some artwork uh, about Jesus and on, for Easter. Uh, maybe you might want to decorate some eggs and talk about how those eggs symbolize new life. Uh, maybe... Maybe you can find a butterfly outside as well. Um, those are all things that we, we use to symbolize the new life that Christ gives us. And so, children, I would love to receive pictures of that. I think that Pastor Candace may be asking you to make Easter bonnets and take pictures with those as well. And I, I've been told that that is not just for the children, that everyone in the congregation is, is more than invited to make your own creative Easter bonnet and take a picture and post it onto our Facebook page. I would love to see those, please. Our scripture verse this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 28. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. 
His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus said that he came to bring us life, abundant life. And I love quoting that passage, that quote of Jesus. I love preaching it. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. But wrapped up in that promise of life is also a need for death. One follows the other. And Jesus was not shy about this. Several times leading up to this entry into Jerusalem, he made it clear that he would be killed And he also made it clear that he would rise three days later. But on Palm Sunday, this is the day that we celebrate and remember that triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. When the King of Kings and Lord of Lords humbly rode on the back of a donkey. But we know that this was the beginning of the last week of his life. And so this celebration time is also mixed with a bit of unspoken foreboding of what is to come. And there should be no question in our minds that as Jesus entered Jerusalem, he understood the road that he was walking down. And he understood the suffering that lay ahead. Now, just before he went into Jerusalem, just before the scene that we just read, just before that, he had gone to the, friend, the house of his friend Lazarus, who had been sick and who had died. But Jesus came and resurrected him. He called him out of the tomb. And here and then in this passage, Jesus has entered Jerusalem, and the crowds have all heard. Some of them were there, and they've heard what he's done, that he is this famous miracle worker that has brought life. But again, life from death. In fact, the scripture tells us that Jesus had received word that Lazarus was very sick, And yet he waited two extra days before going to him, knowing that he would die before he got there. But he said that it needed to happen this way so that God might be glorified. So as Jesus rides the donkey into Jerusalem and the crowds cheer that the healer and miracle worker, the famous Jesus of Nazareth, had come to the city Jesus is not under any illusions about what awaits him. In fact, his encounter with Lazarus foreshadows 
his own death and resurrection. Jesus says that the time has now come for the Son of Man himself to be glorified, for the same thing to happen to him. And then he says these words about wheat and seeds. I often read these words at the graveside with families. He says, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And we understand this imagery of death and life, right? That one thing can become so much more. And Jesus is talking about himself here, that he also must die so that all of us can live. But he is also speaking of all of us, all of those who would follow him. After all, Jesus is the first fruit. Now, these are really deep ideas, honestly. They're, they're confusing. Um, in fact, it says in the passage, right, that the disciples didn't understand everything that was happening at the time. When Jesus first went to Lazarus's house, Lazarus's sister, Martha, greeted him. And Jesus told her that he was going to raise Lazarus. And she thinks the same way that we think, I think, most of the time. And she says, yes, of course, he'll be raised in the, the, the days at the end when all of us are raised. But Jesus responds to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And those who live and believe in me shall never die. And this is before he was resurrected. Before all of that happened, Jesus says this to Martha. But so which is it, right? Are are we living or are we dying? Do we gain life in some eschatological end times in heaven or Are we understanding it to be eternal and abundant life now? And the answer, of course, is yes. It's both and. Each of us has two deaths, at least, I guess. We have a physical death that we do not want to happen, but we know that it will. And then we have a metaphorical death that we participate in here and now. But we don't like to think about death, do we? At least I do not like thinking about death, whether it is physical or metaphorical. And I've had to think about it a lot lately, right? With the news, this constant numbers being updated on the number of people who have died. And I naturally fear for my health and the health of my loved ones, for the members of our church. I don't want anyone to die. Yet balanced with with that reality that we're all living in is also an understanding that physical death is unavoidable. We are all walking down that path in some sense. It's an inevitable reality. But sometimes the circumstances of our lives, especially when there are um, mass things like this or war or famine, It's thrust into our reality and we're forced to confront it. But as Christians, we also believe that this life is not all there is. So rather than living in a state of fear and worry, we do what we can. We wash our hands, we disinfect our houses, we keep our distance. And then we have to let go of what we can't control, knowing that even if I die, I live on. One of my favorite prayers is the serenity prayer, right? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So during these kind of times, these kind of trying times, I lean into the promise 
the covenant of resurrection. It is one of the greatest messages that we have to offer the world. It is an essential part of the gospel, of the good news, that death is not the end and does not have the last word. Now, we want to avoid physical death, but we need not fear it. Now, the other type of death, the metaphorical death, is the death that we have to experience if we are going to fully live into the abundant life that Christ offers us right now. When we are baptized, we are joined to Christ in his death and in his life. We, are, we call it being born again. We are called to die to ourselves daily and to live in Christ. We are called right now to die to our selfishness and our pride and our vanity and our greed. And we are called to live in Christ. Lives of love and hope and peace and joy. Jesus said in this passage, taking into account all of the things that that were coming and about to be the reality, Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. How many of you, your souls are troubled right now? Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. You know, I do, not, I do not believe that God causes death or pain or suffering. But I do believe that God works through them, that God transforms them, that God brings life from death. So even as much as I am praying for God to take this virus away and to bring healing, I also understand that perhaps, perhaps we have a purpose in all of this to speak words of hope and love, to care for one another in ways that we probably haven't cared for each other in the past. How many of you have called and spoken to friends or loved ones who maybe you haven't spoken to or called in a very long time? So as much as I pray, take this cup away from all of us, I also pray, Father, glorify your name. And I believe that he has, and I believe that he will. For we have this promise from God, this promise of resurrection. It hasn't happened yet, but we have this promise, this foreshadowing, this of life from death, this covenant for those who put their faith and trust in Jesus, that there is more that we will live, even if we die, that God will see it through. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. During this time, during this season, we're not showing up and sitting in the pews and there's no plate being passed, right? Uh, And yet our church still has ministry that we are doing in the community and in the world. Uh, And we have employees that depend on your generosity and on your on your giving. And so we give again, we give as an act of worship. We pray that you would um, think about continuing if you were able to still give in this time, even though you're not physically here. And we have several ways that you can do that. You can text to give, you can give online, you can mail in a check. Uh, any of those things. But remember that that this church does not exist uh, apart from you and apart from this body and its generosity. So we pray for you to do that. Our closing hymn is the hymn of promise. Please join us as you are able.
please join us in this closing prayer together. God of the covenant, you are ever faithful. Your love never ends. Teach us your ways and guide us in your paths of love and forgiveness that we may bear witness to your grace and salvation. Amen. Go in peace and love and new life this week. May you find ways to have this time be sacred and holy wherever you are. Go in peace. Amen. Mm-hmm.